Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have another viewer request video where I am going to take you through everything you need to know about Apache Ray. So Apache Ray is a very popular open source framework that's really designed to simplify distributed computing and make it much less complex. Um, so distributed computing is a really powerful way to do really large scale workloads quickly, but it's typically really difficult to set up. So what Apache Ray comes in to do is enabling developers <coughs> to build scalable applications that will handle large scale data, machine learning workloads without needing to actually manage a lot of the distributed computing part of it. Um, and Ray's unique approach to this combines a powerful core for distributed task and actor management alongside specialized libraries for machine learning, hyperparameter tuning, data processing, and model serving. And my goal in this video is going to be, number one, going through how Apache Ray works, some of its advantages, some of its disadvantages, and then talk about which use cases Apache Ray is best suited for so that you can decide whether Apache Ray is the right tool for your use case. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, let's get into how Ray actually works. Um, and so at its core, Apache Ray is structured around a programming model that allows developers to execute Python code in parallel across a cluster of machines. And within that, you have two main paradigms, stateless tasks and stateful actors. So tasks are lightweight, stateless units of computation that are executed independently, um, which are, makes them ideal for parallel workloads like data processing or simulations. Actors, on the other hand, are stateful workers that maintain a persistent state across computations, which makes them more suitable for workloads like streaming and serving machine learning models, where you need to have constant knowledge of previous runs and tasks. Additionally, Ray's execution model is built around the concept of remote functions, which are ordinary Python functions that are annotated with Ray.remote. So just how you would build a normal Python function, we just add it at Ray.remote tag at the start of it. Then these functions can be executed asynchronously and the results are returned as futures, which enables non-blocking computation. Um, so essentially you have a future result that uh, can be referenced downstream. And then underneath, Ray's scheduler dynamically assigns tasks to workers based on resource availability, making sure that each worker is making efficient utilization of its CPU, GPU, and memory across all the worker nodes within the cluster. Then this framework also, you can see data stream through memory, uh, includes an in-memory object store that facilitates the efficient sharing of data between tasks. So even though these tasks might be stateless, you still have object store to share data between tasks. And this avoids the need for repeated data transfers, which can usually be a bottleneck in distributed systems. Um, and then finally, to actually manage those clusters, Ray provides a built-in dashboard that provides real-time monitoring of resources, uh, you know, tasks and actors, making it easy to debug and to optimize distributed workloads. And you can see here what that would look like. Um, and generally, installing Apache Ray is pretty straightforward. It's really just an additional package to you know integrate with your Python-based workloads. Um, and all you need to do to install it is just pip install Ray, um, and you'll have the tools you need to start building the distributed applications. Still need to find it a cluster to run it on, but that you know part of actually installing it is relatively easy. So now that we know a bit about how Ray works, I also just want to show you, you know, some different examples of how Ray might be used in Python code uh, for different use cases, and also talk about some of the advantages of Ray. So number one, something that's, you know, just kind of show you how easy it is to actually use Ray for machine distributed machine learning processes. You can see you already have a lot of the different kind of functions built in. So if you just want to do standard Ray data training, you can, you know, read it in, you have boosted trainers, you can say, hey, I wanna train on this data set across a set of workers, fit that model, tune it, um, you can do batch predictions, you can you know, fit to get the best results, do different hyperparameter tuning, uh, predictive deployment, um, and really just have a single unified framework, which is one of Ray's most compelling features, is it's really robust versatility. Whether you want to use parallelism, you wanna have distributed computing, you wanna use specialized libraries, Ray really removes the need to have to integrate different tools for different stages of the workflow because you can use Ray to manage all of those different components. Um, for instance, 
kind of example here is you can use Ray Tune for distributed hyperparameter optimization. You can use Ray Serve for scalable model deployment. You can use Ray RLib, which is not here, but is another option for reinforcement learning. Those are all within that same ecosystem. Um, and then another advantage is the ease of use. Ray has really easy to use Pythonic APIs. So you can see that up on the screen that make it accessible to deployment or to developers without needing extensive expertise in how distributed systems actually work. You don't need to understand that. All you need to do is say, hey, I wanna use this amount of workers um, and Ray abstracts away all the complexity that it would typically be involved with managing clusters, figuring out task scheduling, handling failures. Um, and that means that you as a developer can just focus on your application logic rather than the intricacies that come with trying to stand up distributed computing on your own. Um, and then underpinning that all is really, really excellent scalability. Um, applications built with Ray can scale seamlessly from a single machine to a cluster of thousands of nodes, whether that's on-premise, in the cloud. Ray's resource-aware scheduler will just look at your pile of compute that you've assigned it and ensure efficient allocation of tasks, even if you have a heterogeneous environment where you might have different configurations of CPUs, GPUs, and memory across different machines. Ray is able to actually read that in and also make sure your tasks are scheduled efficiently even across a varied compute environment. And then finally, Ray's fault tolerance mechanisms also make it very robust for production environments. Uh, tasks are retried automatically in the event of failures and actors can also recover their state when restarted. Um, so if you, you know, need to restart a model from the middle of it, you don't need to rerun every single parallel task. You can recover the state even if there was a failure um, and also if you're able to recover that state, it really reduces the likelihood of catastrophic failures in super long running workloads if you can't, you know, when you can't recover anything. Now, while there are a lot of great things about Ray, there are also a few different downsides to be aware of and some limitations. Number one is that distributed systems are inherently going to introduce overhead. Ray is no exception. For small workloads, the overhead of task scheduling and internode communication is probably going to outweigh the benefits of parallelism because you need significant compute to actually run and manage all this parallelism. So Ray is really best suited for workloads that are either computationally intensive or require significant parallelism from the start. Um, and then point number two is that while Ray's APIs are really intuitive for basic use cases, the framework can have a steep learning curve when it comes to kind of more advanced features. Um, understanding how to optimize resource allocation, debug distributed failures, implement custom schedulers, will require familiarity with Ray's internals. Um, and this can be a barrier for new teams that are new to distributed computing. While Ray does remove you know, a lot of complexity to get started, you're still going to have to run into, hey, when you get to a certain scale, optimize and figure out how to do things better. Um, and to do that, you're gonna need to have a good understanding of how distributed computing works. Um, and then third, Debugging in Ray can be pretty challenging. Um, you know, the Ray dashboard is useful for insights and diagnosing subtle issues like deadlocks or inefficient ta task scheduling. Um, it's probably gonna require some more significant effort. Uh, dependency management is another potential pain point. Every node in the cluster has to be the same environment. Um, and dealing with that with complex Python dependencies, you might actually not want every node in the cluster to have the same environment. So dealing with that can be difficult. Um, and then Ray is also probably not the best choice for pure batch processing workloads. Frameworks like Spark or Dask are more efficient for those use cases because they're optimized for large scale trans data transformations rather than the more dynamic interactive workloads for which Ray was designed around. Now with those advantages and disadvantages in mind, I wanna start talking about, you know, hey, what are the best use cases for Apache Ray? The best use cases are machine learning and artificial intelligence applications. Um, the built-in libraries like Raytune make it easy to perform hyper-parameterization at scale. Um, you can have a developer that can train a machine learning model with different configurations in parallel across a cluster, dramatically reducing the time required to identify the best parameters. You can have many different model training sessions going on in parallel, all with different sets of hyperparameters. Choose the best one instead of having to keep running through it kind of iteratively. Um, another great area that Ray excels in is model service. Um, Pat Ray Serve provides a lightweight framework um, for actually deploying models um, at scale. You have support for dynamic scaling based on traffic patterns. Um, and this makes it really ideal for production environments where model latency and throughput uh, are super critical. Um, and then you also have reinforcement learning. Um, so down here, 
you know, like I talked about, Ray is really well suited for more interactive workloads. Um, so Ray RLib simplifies the pro training of reinforcement learning models, distributed environments, giving you an app API for algorithms like PPO, DPG, and also allowing you to kind of retrain and sync your gradients of different iterations across different workers, um, which makes it a really popular choice for things like robotics, game development, autonomous, autonomous systems, um, and then also real-time data processing. Um, so another great use case um, is you know kind of bringing in uh, leveraging actors that process streams of data, and then you can build scalable systems like event processing, monitoring, online analytics on top of that dynamic processing engine. Um, and raise support for complex dependency graphs allows you to kind of orchestrate those more dynamic workloads. So really any kind of you know dynamic, long-term kind of you know constantly iterating real-time processing is a really good use case for Ray. Um, also, its ability to handle large-scale simulations makes it really useful for you know finance, physics, uh, it's more scientific workloads as well because you can distribute those simulation tasks across a cluster, which is really going to help accelerate your time to insight. Um, so yeah, that is those are really some of the best uh, use cases for Apache Ray. You know, machine learning, AI applications where you're constantly retraining, you have dynamic inputs, you want to test many different versions of a single model at the same time, Apache Ray is probably the right tool for you. Um, so that's really all I have for you in this video. I just wanted to make a quick video, help you understand what Apache Ray does, what it's useful for, what it's not useful for, um, and hopefully you now have a good sense of whether Apache Ray is right for you, use case, or not. Um, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.